as an artist, why did you choose to set up your studio in Lesbos and to follow the journey of refugees, uh, despite the fact that uh, radios, papers, uh, are already covering these topics? Why do you feel particularly concerned by this topic? As an artist, I normally have to do my work when I could understand the situation. And uh, obviously, refugee situation, it's a um, it's global situation. It's, um, it's overwhelming. And uh, you, you hear so much from the press uh, or news media. At the same time, you feel, um, as an individual, you're very, uh, yeah, you're powerless, you, you, you know, when you see a situation like this. So very often I want to be involved, so first I have to go to the location and to put myself um, close to examine the situation. That's what I always do. I was in Lesbos with my, my son and my girlfriend. We decided to go, then we saw those refugees come down from the boat. And uh, that was shocking. You know, you say something, it's very different from when you hear it. You know, you all know there's a, a snake, but when you see a snake, it's very different. Mm. Uh, it's just like that. I decided to spend a New Year's Day there also in the camp. So then we see oh, all those people in this, this very, very bad camp, you know. Uh, there's no light, and the people basically just sit on the mud, and uh, you know it's wet, and there's no hot water, no no bath, or no no you know all, any kind of daily needs. We, we. Then this Europe, you see, there's no help for those people, and uh, except some volunteers, hmm. and uh, so. Yeah, that got me involved. They are really photos with a very strong aesthetic composition and photos or videos much more spontaneous. And I wonder if you, if you care about aesthetic when you work or, or if you just record and record as a way of uh, experiencing something. I'm doing. I'm an artist doing a lot of works about uh, documenting and recording. Um, I should say I'm quite experienced, and uh, so sometimes you just have to respond very quick. But of course, your your training or your experience or, or tells you. You know, you have to argue is that okay to take that photo, or or are you going to be quick enough to take that photo? You know, you constantly make a, even just small judgment. You have to make a judgment to say uh, why I have to do this. You know, uh, so it all have for different kind of reasons. I would say, when the, whenever there's a judgment, there's always uh, have some aesthetic uh, condition in there. But sometimes just unconsciously, you know, even it's just your habit, but uh, still you're the one and uh, takes action. You have to defend uh, your action, yeah. Um, so my question, you, you stage yourself in this photo with a refugee, mm -hmm. and, and why did you do so? I mean, do you build relationships with any refugees in particular? Do they know that you are a world-renowned artist? And how do they react to you being there? Uh, nobody knows I'm an artist even. I think uh, maybe I have a beard for them, a little bit uh, have like one second of uh, hesitation because you know the most of them have a beard. So I think they, and maybe because my age, you know, this guy, they are very friendly to me, anyhow. I never had any, even just one case. I met thousands, huh? I went to dozens of camps. 
I photograph, I talk to them. I never meet anybody who is、uh, have negative feeling or or offend、uh, offend me or against me.、Hmm. So I think、uh, it's natural act. I like to.、Um, to me,、um, my social media use is more or less like a diary. So I meet people. I put on. A, I take a photo. I, I have an interesting conversation. I would take a photo, and、uh, you know, I, I just say, oh, maybe that to rem- remind me this moment. But very often you don't even have time to look back. You know, it's it's very so. I sometimes surprised. I, oh, I said, okay, that's nice. I I did that before. And、uh, yeah, we are living a time the information、uh, flows so fast, and、uh, it's all kind of new technology. So make our life uh, like uh, so much information, like we are living a few life. But at the same times, it crashes and、uh, make life very fragmental. Because you can see ten tragedies within five minutes、um, on on the on the social media,、mm. or you can laugh and cry in one or next minute. So <clears throat> it make it, it completely destroy our sensitivity in the way. Mm. Mm. But、uh, I think we are human. We are quite capable in. Uh, in handling those situations, and we asking even more. So that's the situation. It's not. A,、um, it's very much like a phenomenon. But as we have said, even just a, like a coincident, and it has a very profound meaning in there. For me, that's what's so important about the work you're doing. Is when I hear you talk about it, and when I experience it, it humanizes both the people you're depicting、mm-hmm. and ourselves、mm-hmm. as viewers of it, because so often media images kind of, as you say, desensitize us, and it just becomes news, information, numbers, and then also I'm used to academic discourse, which has this kind of objectivity and this research method that distances you in a way. Whereas I think the work of an of an artist, as this observer of the human experience and human condition, reminds us, brings us back to ourselves. You're trying to use their language, or you're trying to introduce your language. So, but you see some existing interests like a Sophie, and、uh, or when I see. Even something necessary when someone cutting other people's hair, I said, "Can you cut for me?" He said, "Yes." I say, "There." He did my hair cutting. And the next trip, I went to Mexico. I I also did the hair cutting for a barber. I said,、uh, "Why don't you let me cut your hair?" He was very surprised. So he was sitting there. I did the hair cutting for him, and his wife was so happy, and his son also very happy. So I think you need、uh, this kind of moment to to understand、uh, so-called humanity. You have to understand we are the same, and、uh, you are part of me. I'm part of you. We share the same value. That's why we we feel we are human. So, but those has to for artists need to take some kind of act, you know, to yeah, to respond with uh, with uh, touching or 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 even reverse the position to see how about if I mean your situation. And、uh, I think those are very interesting to to think uh, uh, subver- subversively about the situation. Uh, sometimes, most time, I would make the work uh, more uh, more interesting, have a more uh, uh, stronger argument. Yeah. 
Do you ever feel, uh, I mean, is, are you trying to convey the idea that this could be any of us? We could be refugees uh, at any moment. Yes, actually, I, I grew up in a refugee situation. I, my father was exiled when I was born, the same year, 1957. He was uh, crushed as a rightist. He was a writer. So we have to be sent to a very remote area. And uh, then later we sent to labor camp. And uh, we lived underground. We dig a hole underground, and then we live in there for five years. So I experienced all the difficulties of uh, someone being neglected or being seen as uh, foreign or as uh, anti-revolution or different. You know, They're, they just see you are different. They see you are dangerous. You are. Mm. You are. Um, uh, all those experiences, I have a strong memory. Maybe that is a foundation of why I, I do associate myself with those uh, people who was misfortune. Uh, you, you, you have already collaborated with other artists, such as Olaf Eliasson. You worked with architects. Do, have you ever collaborated with a social scientist? And would you feel like it? I mean, you, you've explained to us before I, that you develop a, a huge work of documentation. But what I do like you feel it about so working? Much. You know, I, I, I never see artists as any superiority uh, in terms of uh, experiencing or to, to, to transform your expression into some kind of new language. Very often I'm learning like this moment from social scientists, so from uh, you guys or from uh, other people. It's, for me, it's a learning uh, process. And those uh, times are most important uh, for artists like me. And uh, yeah, it's like a da daily training. You know, you, I think any sportman is not just uh, want to, to achieve uh, Olympics, but rather a daily training, mm. you know, that make day by day, and uh, that's, that's most interesting to, to their life. And you, Mimi, and what do you think <laughs> about uh, the idea of, uh, well, collaborating with an artist such as Ai Weiwei? Do you think it can feed the, the knowledge or understanding social sciences have? Definitely. I mean, it's incredibly enriching in, in several different ways. I mean, on the one hand, the, amount of visual documentation that you've produced in this over this year or more is a, such a, a new insight, a new way of seeing the refugee crisis. It's very different from the media images and different from if you, you know, went yourself as a researcher and sort of did a research project, you mm -hmm. would be very focused on asking particular questions, interviewing people. But your work is this kind of broad, um, experience that gives a, a new kind of data, I think, for social scientists and a new way of seeing the refugee crisis. And then the other side that it makes me think of is new ways of communicating it. Hmm. And so in research, we're so used to writing. We write articles and sure. we maybe talk, speak, a, give a lecture, mm -hmm. but to communicate to a wide public of many people and to um, instigate discussions, conversations, um, new ways of experiencing this issue, the kind of visual impact of art is very different and it touches people differently, I mm. think, and connects them to the, the issue differently. You, you very often uh, involved people in your, uh, in your work and I was wondering if you uh, are thinking about a way to involve uh, refugee in your, in your work perhaps in the documentary film you are, uh, you are preparing? I think it's uh, very difficult and um, because I know uh, my knowledge about them, even I have been uh, interviewed over hundreds of them. We did uh, a few hundred hours of documentation. I have probably visited more camps than most people, even the people uh, maybe more than even than uh, UNHCR people because I have been flying all over 
those camps. But still, what I have seen is very superficial. And maybe their life with us refugees are also very superficial, you know, because、uh, the content of life is almost nothing. You know, you wake up, then you wait for the sandwich, you make a few phone calls, then the day come to the end, then you wake up. You know, there's no no other information coming. So it's very very hard to to really. Work with them, you know. So unless you're a social worker, you can help them build houses or make a garden or or do some、uh, teaching in in those、uh, more profound way. But I I try to support them with their school, you know, the, because they're professionals to make a school. Also, hospital in dealing with their life situation because you know they just. Like us, you know, they need a hospital. <laughs> If you get sick, or, 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 you know, they all we all the same. We all need、uh, some kind of treatment. But it's very hard to to really offer more uh, because uh, after all, life it's come from a struggle. They are. In many many reasons, for many many different reasons, they have been putting in this kind of struggle as their fate. And、uh, you can standing aside them to help them a little bit, but you can never really leave in somebody else's fate. You know, it's, it's too pretentious and too too superficial. I think. So that's my understanding. Yeah. You're very used to to deal with、uh, human tragedy, and、uh, is it sometimes difficult、uh, for you to、um, to take a photo or to take a video? Or do you think sometimes no, I can't do that. It's impossible. Do you face sometimes that kind of、uh, of of problem? I used to, but、uh, not anymore. I used to feel okay. That、uh, is a proper. But、uh, you often have to say on which, because our judgment is is really based on various different understanding of、uh, our moral standings. If you someone dying, I think if I'm dying, do I want someone to take that photo? My answer would be yes. I want people to know. What is the situation? So I often say, you know, it's not that I take that photo. It's if that photo have rights to be exist. If that image shows, if I don't do that, that piece of、uh, dignity is going to disappear without notice. So that pushes me to some works. Very often, people say, "Oh, maybe that is not moral or whatever." But to me, I don't have that kind of problem. You know, I would judge by the information that that image contains and what kind of、uh, message that would carry. I think it's also very important to record something, to and to witness something because.、Uh, Sometimes, even it's very difficult to look at it. But if you close your eye, it seems never happened. That's even more difficult to accept. But I think also your images go beyond just showing people as victims, as desperate in rags. That、oh, they、yeah. show human、yeah. dignity, and they show yeah, people true, living their lives in difficult circumstances, but with、uh, dignity to them. Yeah, your your attitude definitely reflects in your your photos. You know, very often we see some journalist、uh, photos、um, have such a superior, elite,、uh, or detached、uh, position. To I'm so pity on you, or I'm so look at this so pitiful. But I, I I'm quite conscious. You know, the photo I'm taking is me. Could be me.